Good day everybody and welcome to a beautiful afternoon in the desert of Chihuahua, Mexico. Very happy to be here with Osbaldo from Discovery Silver. How are you doing buddy? I'm doing well. Yourself? Very happy and excited to be here. So we're stood uh, on a small peak in the center of a huge valley. Can you tell us a bit about the regional geology that formed this area? Yes, of course. Uh, believe it or not, you can think in this area as an ocean. Around 100 million years ago, more or less, 80 million years ago, this was a sea and it's uh, been called actually as a Mexican sea. After a while, that sea was accreted into the, content, into the continent by the force of the plate tectonics. So all those beds of sediments were folded, we call it chevron folds. And then around 30 million years ago, there were volcanism in this area. So these peaks, perhaps there were a, a one volcan, and there were some magmatic rocks intruding those sediments, coming through uh, to form these rocks where we are standing right now. So we have a collisional zone, uh, the accretion of this to the, the Mexican region, that leaves gaps for the magma to flow through. The magma comes uh, hot, really hot, and after it starts cooling down, it releases the fluids that come with the magma, and then those fluids uh, carry, in this case, uh, some metals, silver, lead, zinc, and then they go through through the folds and fractures to infill those fractures and form, in this case, narrow but high-grade veins. Also, because the magma is hot and it's intruding the cold sediment, it's, uh, we can think in toasting or cooking the hot rock, and it makes uh, reactions also with the hot rocks, chemical reactions. When the layers are, uh, have the right characteristics, let's say um, calcareous, rocks. They form scarns, uh, horfels, which is another type of uh, ore deposits also that we have in this in this district too. And here exactly where we stood, this has happened on a really large scale, right? We're stood on one of the world's biggest undeveloped silver projects. How do you find the silver on, in this location? It comes uh, in high grade within those narrow veins, uh, normally associated with other sulfides, galena, which is lead sulfide, uh, sphalerite, which is zinc, which is zinc sulfide, uh, pyrite, and other, and other sulfide as well, as well as uh, silver sulfide, argentite. But uh, those fluids uh, where we can think probably the feeders uh, permeate or uh, were introduced also in, in, into those, uh, well, uh, fractures or bedding, and we, we find also replacement zones where we have more massive, uh, more extended uh, mineralization. We're stood on one point. It's quite a large resource, right? 914 million ounces silver equivalent. Is that right? Yes, that's right. Yeah. About a million, a billion ounces. Yeah. Yeah. But that's uh, only a small part of your whole project. Uh, which stretches from either side of the valley, as we can see in the background. There is a huge potential in this area. Our deposit is located in one trend, northeast trend, and our, the size of our property it's about 15 kilometers uh, length. We have to uh, to explore uh, a lot. We have explored probably no more than five percent of our property, where we found this huge deposit, and we are still uh, exploring within the same train. There are good chances that the same um, uh, similar occurrences we can find within that train. We are within what we call the Mexican silver belt and that is composed of both uh, scarn type, uh, replacement, uh, CRT deposits and also epithermal, epithermal mineralization within that train. Normally in Northwest uh, so we are right in the intersection between the northwest trend and also a northeast trend. And what are your hopes for the future on this project? Do you see this becoming a mine in the near future? Uh, absolutely, yes, uh, no question. I think this is going to be one of the most important mines in Mexico, for sure.